What's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ultimark products, more specifically the iPack encoders, and we're going to be taking a look at how to configure the iPack 2, the iPack 4, and the iPack mini. So the first thing you want to do is go to ultimark.com. You want to head over to support downloads and you want to select whatever product it is you have. So for example, if you go to iPack 2, then you go down here to where it says click here to download program. Now make sure you pay attention to this here where it says that if you have a, a board that it's older than 2015, you have to use this version of the program, but we're going to be concentrating on the newer boards. So you would download this program here, install it, and then you want to go ahead and open that program. Now, if you have one of my systems, it's going to be in the start menu right here when I pack. If you don't have one of my systems, you can open up a folder and go to the C drive, go to program files x86 and go all the way down to when I pack V2. That's the default install location. Now, if you do have one of my systems and you open up when I pack from here and it says something like board not recognized down here or has a big X over here, then go ahead and go to this location and open up the one that says when I pack older. OK, and that should get you squared away. So let's go ahead and open the program. And right now you can see that I have a mini pack connected down here. It says board is in keyboard mode, which is what you want. If it's not in keyboard mode and such as it says it's an X input or D input or anything like that, you want to go ahead and put it back into keyboard mode. Now to do that, you're going to hold down your player one star button. So if we take a look at just an X arcade joystick as an example here, you would hold down your player one star button and you would hold down this player one button one right here. Okay. If uh, you wanted to put it into the input, it would be this one. And if you want to put it into X input, it would be this one. So what you do again each time is you hold down start and you press each one of those buttons at the same time, depending the mode that you want to get into. And you have to hold it down for about 10 to 15 seconds. OK, then you want to see this here say that the board is in keyboard mode. OK, then we're good to go. So let me explain to you guys how the uh, iPacks work. The mini pack might be the hardest one to understand because it doesn't have labels on the board itself. So let me show you this over here. Uh, this is what the iPack uh, or the mini pack looks like. OK, so you have groups of pins J1, J2, J3, J4. Whereas if you look at something like the iPack 2, you actually have each pin labeled with one SW1, one SW2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, you have one start, one coin, and you have the same stuff for player two. And you have these additional one A, one B, two A and two B pins over here. So you basically can connect wires and buttons to any pins. It doesn't matter what you do because you can configure this any way you like in the software, in the Win iPack software. However, I recommend that you guys do it in this order. So let me pull up this diagram here. OK, so I recommend that you guys do it in this order, top to bottom left to right. So you can see that my player one button one is one is W one player one button two is one is W two, three, four, five, six. OK, so you do it in order left to right, top to bottom. If you wanted to, of course, you can just put six over here, one over here, whatever. And as long as you know where you put everything, you can configure it in the utility. But to keep things consistent and easy to understand, I recommend that you do this and player two. Same thing. Two is one, two is W one, two is W two, three, four, five and six. And then, you know, you have your player one start and coin, which are labeled on, on the iPack four, which is what this is here, which is very similar to the iPack two. It's just bigger and everything's labeled. So I, I recommend that you guys do it in the order that I just said. And then for your extra buttons or I should say extra pins like these are one A, one B, two A and two and two B, uh, you can connect those to your admin buttons so that those would be like your uh, like your start. Um, I'm sorry, your your um, well, yeah, your start game button, uh, which is this right here. Enter this. I'm just using an extension from Rec Room Masters as an example, but this applies to any control panel. So you have your your select button. Usually you have like an exit button, uh, maybe a pause button and maybe a button to access like the menus of the emulators and stuff like that. So you can use those four pins for that. All right. So as I was saying, you have everything labeled on the iPad four and on the iPad two. On the iPack mini, you do not. It's groups of pins. But if you go over here to wiring, uh, mini pack wiring, and you open up this nice PDF that they give you, which I have open right here, you can see that it explains to you what all the pins and all the color wires are. And color wires are these wires here that you get when you purchase 
a mini pack. You get this hard, nice harness here that you just plug in. It has a block connector and it has all these different wires. And if you look closely here, they're separate. They're separated. So you have this group, this group, this group, and this group. And that's why you have the different groups here. And that's why here it shows you each group and each group has the same color wires. So let's say you connected this brown wire to one of your buttons. Well, you come here and you see that that is 2B right here. The brown one is 2B. It's this pin right here, which is this pin right here, J1, group J1, C, group J1 there. So then when you open up when I pack, you have the pin right there, but you can also just go over here, 2B, which is what this diagram told you that pin is, 2B. So now you have a wire there, you want to assign any keyboard key to that. You just go over here to the right and you select the keyboard key from the drop down. Let me do that now. I make it A, letter A. You can see down here it says a board successfully reconfigured. It happens on the fly. As soon as you select something for that drop down there, it'll assign it to that pin. So now if you have a button connected to that wire to that pin, when you test it out and let's say no pad and you press that button, it's going to output the letter A because that's what you told it here. Okay. So that's basically as easy as it gets guys. And you can not only select the pin from here, but you can physically select the pin to match the location of the pin on the actual board. So you can do it here. If you see when I select that, I went to 2B, select that it went to 2A. So you can either do it from the drop down or by actually clicking on each of these pins here. So as another example, if I have now another button, connected to the red wire on group J1. That's telling me that that is 2A. So now I go over here to when I pack and I select 2A from the drop down, or I select it right here by clicking on it, 2A. And then over here, I select the key that I want to assign to 2A. All right, so if I make it I, we're successfully configured. Now if I go to notepad and I press that button, it's gonna send I going to output I. Okay. And a better way to test buttons than using notepad is to go to a keyboard tester website. So if I go to Google keyboard tester, I like using this one right here, brings this up. And as when you're pressing different buttons around your control panel, they're going to light up on the screen and you can see that everything is working. So that is the, the iPack mini or the mini pack. But if uh, you have an iPack two, or an iPack 4 is the same idea. I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug in an iPack 2 right now so I can show you. Okay, so the iPack 2 is plugged in. I'm gonna open up one iPack again. There you go. Now it shows you a different picture that matches the iPack 2 and it says board is in keyboard mode. So as you can see, this was even easier because right here you can see all of the pin, uh, all of the pin labels. So let's say, you know, you followed my advice and you are wiring your control panel and for your six player one buttons, you mapped them or you connected them, I should say, as one is W1, two, three, four, five, and six. So then here, you can see that one is W1 is right there. You can literally click on it and it also selects it up here. Or again, from the drop down, you can just select it. So pin one, one is W1, select it right there. If you look at my diagram for arcade one, okay, which is on my website. So if we go to my website, you go to support, you go to compatible controllers, and then you go down to X arcade. Now don't pay attention that it says X arcade. That doesn't matter. This is for any arcade controller. Um, you go right here, click to download key mapping diagram. That'll pop up what my keys are assigned to. This is what I use. I don't use the standard main layout that you get out of the box with the iPack. So if you were using my configuration as an example, you would want to make that one is W1, the letter A. So one is W1 is the letter A. So you find it here, click on it. And now that is assigned as you can see here, board successfully reconfigured. So then on the next button, one is W2, because again, we're going by this uh, diagram over here that I can't find right now. There you go. One is W1, one is W2, one is W3, four, five, six. All right, I know I'm repeating myself, but I want you guys to understand this. So 
I would go for that next button. So next button is 1SW2, which according to this diagram should be the letter B. So now I select B over here. Boom, there you go. Successfully reconfigured. So if I go to keyboard tester and I press that button, B should light up just like that. All right, so that's pretty straightforward stuff. The iPack 4 is the exact same thing. Obviously, you can see here it's all labeled exactly the same. It's just a bigger board because there are more inputs. So that, let me show you guys one more thing, and that's going to be shifted functions. And all that is is you can make each pin basically act as two keyboard keys, for example. So you're going to have one designated button that you make your shift button and normally that is player one start so if we select player one start over here there it is one start you can see that ipac shift is checked off you're telling it that you want player one start to be the shift button and what does that mean that means that when you hold down player one start it'll act as something else then when you don't uh when you hold player one start and you press another button i should say that button can act as two different things right so let me let me show you what i mean Let's select uh, one as W1 as an example. Okay, so you can see that that says primary A and shifted five. So what does that mean? When you press the button on its own, right, it's gonna output the letter A. If you hold down player one start and press that same button, now it's gonna output the number five. So basically each button can have a dual function if you assign it a shifted value right here while you hold down your player one start or any other button that you designate as a as an ipac shift maybe you don't want your player one start to be the ipac shift you want uh, your your i don't know player one coin or some other special button that you have on your cabinet so whatever that button is whatever pin you connected that button to you come here you select it, you check off ipac shift you're telling it i want that button to be my shift button and then every other button you can assign a shifted function to that button. And as long as you're pressing down your designated shift button, that button is now going to act or output, I should say, whatever is assigned to the shifted function. And if you're not holding your shift, your, your designated shift button, then it's going to send the primary um, a mapping right here, okay? All right, and that's pretty much the gist of it. It's pretty straightforward, really. So one other thing you can do when you're done uh, configuring everything and you have everything working, you come over here, you test all your buttons and everything's outputting what you want it to output, right? Uh, you can actually save the profile. You don't need to save the profile in order to configure the board because again, everything happens on the fly as you're working on this and selecting, you know, letter, different letters here. Everything gets, gets configured into the board real time and everything gets configured to the board itself. So if you unplug your controller, your iPad from the PC, you plug it into another PC, it's still going to retain those assignments. Um, but what you can do here is you can go to file, save as, and you can save your profile somewhere just in case, let's say your iPad goes bad, um, you know, a year from now or whatever. You won't have to come here and do this again. You can buy a new iPad, plug it in, wire everything exactly the same way it was. And then when you go to file open, you would open up the profile that you saved. Let's say I have one here called default. And now when you go to file force board reconfigure, it'll tell you right there, board successfully configured. And it basically took all that work you did before and just flashed it in one shot and everything's gonna be the exact same as it was before. All right guys, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys on the next one.